two, so that is going to cost him very dear indeed. Here is the reigning world champion, Michael Schumacher. As I say, Ferrari have been testing very hard, controversially also testing this week. Whilst we've been here in Imola, they've been over at Monza testing with Badoa and Janay. They're outside of the testing limitations that the, center, the agreement imposed and agreed amongst all the other teams in Formula One. They see no problem with uh, running this week. They are chasing performance. Ross Braun, the technical director, said uh, yesterday evening that it will take time, but they've definitely made a step forward. They've got a new rear construction Bridgestone tyre here. The car uh, has got some new aerodynamic parts on it. The braking system is excellent on this Ferrari, and they are much more competitive than they've been so far this season. Is it competitive enough to give them the pole and the race win? Well, time will tell, but Schumacher certainly is driving like a man with something to drive for. On fresh tyres, this car is absolutely glued to the racetrack. It's like it's on rails, and Michael was revelling in that this morning. He's certainly fast. And then we've seen him do a second lap. He won't have that opportunity now. This is a single flying lap qualifying session. But he goes on to a second lap and goes marginally faster. But then you see the back end of the car starting to get away from him in longer runs. And we're wondering, has he gone for a softer option? to give himself at least grid position, then he'll fight the car through the Grand Prix. We'll have to wait and see, but the car looks altogether more of a, of a one with the driver than it did three weeks ago in Bahrain. Certainly, but it's nothing special like it was last season. It was the class of the field, but here it's really fighting to stay amongst its peers, the BAR and the Renault. Schumacher then shaves almost four tenths off the benchmark of Wurtz. Drain it out tonight and then change it and put the thicker race oil in for tomorrow qualifying and the race. Yeah, all sorts of tricks going on. I bet if you could uh, find out, there'd be a, a long, a long list of uh, bits and pieces. We used to have complete qualifying cars, but I'm not quite sure how the Park Ferme rules really... Uh, I know it restricts a lot of that. I thought it restricted all of that kind of thing, actually. Rubens Barrichello, 32 years of age, competing in his 200th Grand Prix. It's a very exclusive club, the 200 and above club. Only six other drivers have ever joined it. Ricardo Patrese on 256 Grand Prix, the uh, most experienced driver ever. Of course, Michael Schumacher is also a member of that club. But really, Barrichello has been in the shadow of uh, his teammate Michael Schumacher all weekend. Hasn't got close to him on pace. Although, ironically, he is still ahead of him in the Drivers' World Championship at the moment after that second place in Melbourne, Australia. Schumacher really starting at the bottom of a very, very steep mountain to get himself back into the World Championship this year, but he started terrifically well. Fastest at the moment. Barrichello trying to get within three or four tenths of him, which would be uh, an improvement on where he's been so far this weekend. Final corner then for Rubens. 120.2, Michael Schumacher set. This is a 120.8, six tenths slower. Previous Toyotas, that may be the case, but this one is fine with the curbs, and certainly eyewitness. Uh, you'd have to say that he's probably right. Certainly does look to handle the curves quite nicely, but just lacking grip, basically, in the package. Now, here's a man who's been super aggressive all weekend, Kimi Raikkonen. He could snatch the pole off Michael Schumacher because he drives this racetrack on maximum attack, just like his fellow countryman Mika Hakkinen used to do. Wonderful to watch around here, Kimi Raikkonen. Already five one-hundredths up on Michael Schumacher. He's taking it to the German. Yeah, it's a fraction up. We thought Michael Schumacher's time was beatable. I think there are two runners left who could and should beat it. One of them you're watching now. You're looking through the boss of his steering wheel at him working away. You don't get too much of a feel from this shot, funnily enough, really, of, of just the energy and speed that's going on there through Aqua Minerale. Let's see how this McLaren handles the curbs at the top of the Variante Alta. Beautiful, just a little bit of oversteer as he skipped across the top, and he's quarter of a second up with uh, two Ribatsas and the final chicane only to go. He braked into there nicely. Now, uh, oh, perfect exit, James. Absolutely. He's qualified 10th, 6th and 9th in the first three Grand Prix. Qualifying has been the Achilles heel of McLaren Mercedes. They've got a very quick race car. It looks like they've sorted their problems. They've got a quick qualifying car as well. Out of the final corner he goes. Over three tenths of a second faster than Michael Schumacher. A superb lap by Kimi Raikkonen. And, well, Jano Trulli becoming a father for the first time last week. His wife giving birth to a little baby boy, Enzo, and uh, he's a very happy man about that. 
and he'll be happy with that lap, I think. That was a very tidy final sector. And Ted Kravitz has some news for us as Alonso, the World Championship leader, starts his lap. And just before this session, James, Alonso put a turn more front wing on, but interestingly, just on the left-hand side of that front wing. So more downforce just on that side of the car. Interesting, of course, because it's an anti-clockwise circuit here in Imola. Yes, it does have an effect. Uh, you're absolutely right, Ted, in which way the, the key corners are, especially as you turn the wheel and the, uh, the tyre and the brake duct moves through the plane of the front wing. It has quite a dramatic effect on the aerodynamics of the car, as it does also when the car's sliding around. Alonso with a little bit of work to do, a good first sector, and uh, he's in the, he is definitely in the zone somewhere. But let's see how good this Renault is. I don't see it as being as dominant as we've seen uh, in the first three Grand Prix. No, a few hundredths of a second slower than Kimi Raikkonen. And Alonso's only done 20 laps all weekend compared with Michael Schumacher's 60. They're a bit worried about the engine on this car. It's already done a Grand Prix distance, remember, in Bahrain. They didn't want to stress it too much through free practice. Has Alonso been a little bit too calm and casual and conservative, not putting the laps in, not developing this car? How close is he going to be to Kimi Raikkonen? Yeah, well, Raikkonen's got a three-tenth gap between himself and Michael Schumacher and Alonso might just drive right into the middle of that checkered flag is waving and he does indeed and look only by three thousands what an end of the lap for Fernando Alonso